righteous name. Oh, God, we bless you, God. Hallelujah. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you this morning. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice. We thank you and we acknowledge your sacrifice, God. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you, God. Thank you, oh, God. Thank you, oh, God. Thank you, oh, God. We praise you.
glory, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You got up. Hallelujah. We welcome you. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank <laughs> you. 
you may be seated. And the other disciple, the one Jesus loved and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the, at the stripes of the linen laid there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He said, the stripes of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. And he saw, and he believed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were standing. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white. Seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said. And I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will give him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward and cried in Arabic, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them.
because the word that I want to share with you today, you guys, please, is resurrection, the power of God's transforming love. And that's what I want to talk with you a little bit about this morning. That's why I had the scriptures read. Every, every account of when Jesus was resurrected, he was seen. That's why I wanted Lonnie, Lonnie Harris and Patty to see, because I've seen Jesus. I can say, if we believe in you, should be able to say, I've seen Jesus. Amen. And the reason why we can say it is because of that very last verse, the very last verse that, that Mama read, the very last verse that she brought the scripture that she read is, but he said to them, unless Thomas said, unless I see nail marks in your hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands in your side, I'm not going to believe you. And a week later, his disciples, a week later, a week later, a week later, his disciples were together again and Thomas was there and the doors were locked and Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you. Isn't that amazing? You can lock the doors. You can close the windows. You can try to hide from him. You can try to shut everything out. But he can appear right here. Yeah. Yeah. No door can keep him out. No window. No government can shut him down. Nobody, no hell. No demon can stop Jesus. Here in the power of God, we stand. Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Believe in him without seeing him, Jesus said. Because you have seen me, you have believed. So you know what? In the natural, we haven't seen him. Well, I have also seen him in the natural. I saw him when I first got born again, but I'm not going to talk about that. But nevertheless, all of us have not really seen him in the natural. Amen? Yeah. But somebody tell me who's in us that has seen him. The Holy Ghost. Yeah. And the Bible says in Acts 1 8, and you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. Now, what is a witness? Me. 
Resurrection, the power of God's transforming love. Say resurrection. Resurrection. The power of God's transforming love. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you don't mind putting that on the screen as well. I think I told you back to verses 12 through 20. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also vain. Yea, and we have found with false witnesses of God, because we have we will be false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised Christ up, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. And he was really dealing with the Corinthians, because the Corinthians didn't believe in uh, the dead being raised for in the, in the Corinthian uh, in the Corinthians time. So if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, it's one I want you to listen to. Verse 17, if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. Then there also which have fallen asleep, those that have gone with the Lord, they already in heaven, or they already with the Lord, are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are we all are men most miserable. Verse 20, would you put verse 20 in there for me? I don't have that in my notes. Verse 20, but, in, but the fact is that Christ the Messiah has been raised from the dead, and he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep in sleep and death. Christ says, everybody said Christ is risen. And so what aspect of the power of God's transforming love is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. If he hadn't got one, we go to church. Because if he had not gotten up, it's no need for us to be sitting here, but he got up. And once that aspect of the resurrection of the Lord is a love so important to God that it was worth dying for. See, you look at him as the son of God in that he is. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 5, 17, in, in 17, 14 through 17, and then even down to verse 20, it says, these scriptures, these, this one particular scripture says, For God in Christ, for God in Christ, Brian, for God in Christ reconciled the world unto himself. Amen. So God, only God could do what he did. Yeah. And we can't go through the whole Genesis story. What he did for mankind. It's almost like God, if you knew all this was going to happen, why did you do it? God made you to have a will. You are a you have you are a living being, human being. You have a will, which is part of your soul. You have an intellect, which is your mind. You have emotions. Your will, your intellect, and your emotions is part of your soul. But there's a part of you that's spirit, and your soul. And the spirit lives inside this physical body. But know this. Everybody's spirit is not alive. Everybody's spirit is not alive to God. When you give your life to the Lord as an act of your will, then your spirit becomes alive to God. Jesus says in John chapter 6 verse 3, in, in through John 3, 6, it says, you must be born again. You were born of flesh, but now you got to be born of the spirit. And born of the spirit. And so when I'm born of the spirit, that means I'm in contact with God. My spirit is in contact with him. We are the love of Christ. God himself, God himself, God himself lived in heaven. He said, and the scriptures tell us through the Holy Ghost, he said, I have prepared myself a body. Because only, only earth suits can live in this earth. You ain't got a body, you don't have a right to be here. So your body represents who God wants in this earth. And God prepared him a body, came to the earth, called himself son. Jesus. And redeemed mankind back to him. Now don't tell me that ain't powerful, that ain't awesome, and he's all bad. You know, no, no, 
I said that, but this is, he's just as awesome as he can be. He's just as bad, he's bad, bad. He's awesome, he's, you know, why are you saying he's bad? Oh, come on, y'all, you know, you know the word, you know. Look, look I look bad. Glory to God, now you know what I'm talking about. So we have to go there with this. I need you to go there with me. I need everybody in the room to go there with me. I want you to leave this place today knowing resurrection is not just a day we dress up. It's not just a day when we wait on Monday. I think I guess they're still doing it. Coloring Easter eggs. It ain't got nothing to do with the egg. It's got to do with the death and the resurrection. So it's his love. His love. He loved us so, so much that it was God. It was God who said, I, you worth me dying for you. You worth me dying for you. You work. And the only way he can die to Sherry is that he surrendered to Satan. Because Satan is the one that brings death. God is the only one that can bring life. In the Philippians 2, it talks about that. He surrendered to death so we could live. Satan is the one that took us out of here with Eve. You know the story. But the Lord said, uh, 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 uh. I'm not going to send a man. Any kind of man, I'm going, I'm going down there myself. That's why we say Jesus is Lord. That's why a demon possessed person cannot say Jesus is Lord. Jesus, the scripture says he he dis, he dismantled principalities and powers and destroyed them openly and paraded them around. And even when he was in hell, when Jesus died and during those three days, he was in hell. Messing up hell. E.W. King talked about from the cross to the throne. See, the Bible tells us that if they had known what? They would have crucified. But they crucified him. Not knowing, not really thinking, not really understanding. Our sister, we know, Pastor Walter was talking about, that went to be with the Lord yesterday, and I was there helping minister her service and homegoing service and stuff like that. But the, the casket was there, the body was there, but she wasn't there. That's what it's all about, the resurrection. She done been, she done got, she done been, she done done, she is resurrected. She went into another place. Now the thing is, what place are we going to? We know her place she transitioned into heaven. But there's another, there's another age. And I'm not talking about hell all day. I'm just talking about transforming love. It's the love, it's, it's, it's a love so important to God. And we are that love. Who are we? Who are we to be called? It's the gift that we can only give to the world is the love of God. And you carry God's love inside you and the fulfillment of everything that God planned is your destiny. So you have to live for him. Live for him. Live with him. Live because of him. And all of this has to be done with love. We stand in the power of Christ. The love of Christ. For God so what? But God so what? Love. He loved the world. He said he loved Christians. He said he loved the world. He created everybody in this earth. Everyone is a human being. That's why he sent us out. Go ye into all the world and teach and baptize and call them in and, and minister the gospel to them so they can get reborn. Because they now that they're born to a satanic nature. God wants them to be born to a godly nature, and He only has us. My God, that's a shame. Yeah. He only has us. There's sometimes, uh, Mr. D, we, we won't even open up our mouth. Somebody talk to him about the Lord. He only has you. He only has me. And sometimes we won't even open up our mouth. And the only way they're going to hear about the word is that you go and preach Jesus. 
We said we got to say something. We have to say something. You have to say something. But God is so loving and kind that He believed that He could trust you with that big job. I said He's bad all by Himself. He's awesome all by Himself. That He can trust us. He trusts you no matter what you've done, where you are. My goodness. Paul was the worst sinner there, there was. We've all done stuff, and ain't nobody in here profound. I don't care. Even now that you say anything, you holy out die walking around. We still mess up sometimes. But we got a savior. We've got a redeemer. That we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Righteousness. Jesus told me to tell my grandchildren and tell people I meet that ain't living right for him and those that's living right for him. Keep talking to Jesus. Say, brother, keep talking, keep talking to me. Keep talking to me. I don't want to keep talking to me. He said, remember what I did for you? You was getting high and I was talking to you. You didn't know who you was talking to, but you talked talking back to me. And he convinced me. He convinced me. Because I was there to hide a hundred pounds of marijuana in my head on the cross street. And he convinced me. He hooked me because I wanted to stay high because I wanted peace. I wanted something else that I didn't have in the earth. And he hooked me with the very thing that I was didn't want to go to jail for. That was in the 70s. I got said in the 70s, 1973. And it was purity. It wasn't mixed with junk. That don't make it right either. But nevertheless. He hooked me. He said, Beverly, I didn't know who I was talking to. But when you're hot, you're crazy. You talk to anything. And I said, what you say? He said, I got a heart for you. I said, what you mean you got? He said, I got one for you. You ain't got to buy. You ain't got to pay for. And I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, I said, who had it? He said, Christians have that heart. Christians have that heart. So I said, Christians? I said, okay, okay. And eventually, Barbara Huntley. She said, you need the Lord. She doing everything I'm doing. She telling me I need the Lord. And she took me to three churches. One, the last church she took me to, Pastor Nelson was standing up in the pulpit, something like this. I'm sitting way in the back in some profanity and everything else. And Pastor Nelson was up there. I said, now, see, you brought me. He took me to the little white church and they wouldn't get out of time. He took me to the little black church over there. That little holding this church and they hold me down until they didn't get their hands off me. I went home. Oh, 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 oh. And so now you bring me up here to this little church. And then you know, but this time you done told a man my business. She said, I ain't met the man. I don't know who the man is. I'm just bringing you up here. She said, I figured he's a young pastor, so maybe he'll help. I said, Why? Why you don't need no help? She said, Well, we both been here. But that's where I saw Jesus. He disappeared and Jesus appeared. And, and, and I've been with Jesus ever since. Because Jesus will keep you. Say Jesus will keep you. He will keep you. That was a supernatural experience that I had. But he, and he, he kept his promise, Mr. Gordon. He said he was going to keep me high. And he's kept me high since then. And I ain't had to pay a dime for it. I ain't got to go to jail for it. I didn't even have to hide. He kept his promise. He said, well, I, I'm a preacher that I never had before. You ain't close enough yet. We are his love. He loved me so much that he didn't care what I had done. I told him, I can't be like them people. I'm telling you right now. I can't do what they do. I can't be like them. He said, you're not going to have to. I'm going to do it for you. How many else in the room, he done, he done, you got a witness that he did it for you? Yes. Hallelujah! Yes. I didn't have to save myself. I didn't even have to keep myself. I just had to do this very Okay. Do that. Okay. Accept me and watch it work. And 
wanted people. He wanted, he loved me so much. He didn't say very all these sins that you were in. Oh, he didn't even mention any of them to me. I said, do you know who I am? He said, I know how you are, but I can help you. I can do it for you. I can take you out of it. I'm right for you. It's by, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. You can't do it anyway, even if you try. You need me to help you with this thing. Resurrect to heaven, and later on, that body is going to resurrect to life. 
and, and become jump from, from, from mortal to immortality. As first Corinthians top 15 talks about. What are you what are you living for if not for me? That was a word of song for some of you people don't know that. The guy said, What you living for if you ain't living for me? I don't know who came up with that, but my goodness, it came, it came from way back young come with it. Stuff from like way back. He must have thought he was all that. What if you living for if you're not living for me? It wasn't a Christian song, it was a worldly song. Anyway, let's get away from that part and something else. Today is the day to resurrect every promise, every dream, every desire that God loves you. He has risen, and that should give you hope. He got up! Somebody said he got up. He got up! See, from a beat up E.W. King's book, From the Cross to the Throne, he, he talks about the stuff that was going on in the grave, in hell. And they were saying something was stirring in his book. He said something was stirring around. And he said, Satan said, go back there and check out and see what that is. And demons was, this is his story. It, it's not scripted, but it's his story. And then they was uh, running around and everything. And then Jesus, and Jesus confronted Satan, but this is scripture in the book of Revelation. And he took hell, death, and the grave. He took the keys. Yes. He got the keys. He got the key. I may have to go through it, but the Bible says, for once to die and to live is to gain. I may have to leave this earth one day, but I'm not going to leave this, this earth not victorious. Yeah. It's just the earth life is gone, and my heavenly eternal life is beginning. Yeah. Where I will never die again, and I'm going to go to heaven. I don't want to go to heaven. I don't want to live eternally. In hell. Anybody else in the room with me like that? That's what the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ is. Y'all start praying in tongues. So, some need to come back to God. Some need to come to God for the first time. And some are already connected, but in your life is something gone, something's missing. Resurrect your restricted moments, he told me to tell you. You've had some restricted moments. He wants to resurrect your restricted moments. The days where you were restricted, the years that you were restricted, it means, and restricted means limited. He want to resurrect the moments that you was limited. He want to resurrect the days that you were limited. He want to resurrect the years that you were limited. Y'all remember Donna singing a, a new song in Open Heavens? No more limits! That was back in the days. No more limits. No more limits. The Lord is taking the limits off in Him. No more lim limits. Higher frequencies. God is taking off the limits. He's taking off the limits because if you trust in Him, there'll be no more limits. There's higher li uh, dimensions. No more norm. It's all supernatural living with God. It's awesome to live with God because there's places. I mean, people, uh, people are doing that satanically now. Satan's demonically taking them places in the spirit. And believers sitting back wondering, well, what are we talking about? Well, they're striving with the Lord in the spirit. When you see a lot of you seeing a lot of things. And you just didn't know it was God trying to show you that. Well, resurrection took you out of your bondage and out of your prison. You're out of jail. Say somebody say I'm out of jail. I'm out of jail. My God, I'm out of jail. Hallelujah. Yeah. The toy, I'm out of jail. The devil had imprisoned my mind, had imprisoned my emotions, had imprisoned my life, but I'm out of jail. I'm not in prison anymore. I was talking to a group of people yesterday, and I told them, no, pray, pray for us. They're like Paul, they pray for Paul. They pray for Paul that he wouldn't be in prison. Then I thought about that. I ain't going to jail. I don't know if I need to pray about it. But then, I, then the Lord showed me the, the, where the enemy wants to jail you up. How does the enemy, who, who, who in here, the enemy has jailed you up? Jailed you up in your finances. Jailed you up in your emotions. Jailed you up in your body. Locked you in and you can't get out. They even have a movie called what? Get out. 
People want to see that movie. One person wants to see that movie. Probably a lot of them went crazy. Then they had to send her to Charleston, South Carolina. Latoya, you remember her? Me and you went to the hospital and saw her. Went to a movie, saw the movie Get Out, and, and, and she got out of her head. And uh, me and Latoya was there, and Latoria was in the room. And when I, as soon as I walked in the room, she hadn't moved, she hadn't said anything, she hadn't turned over. And then she said, she just sits there. We walked in the room, and I walked over to her, and she looked and turned to the other side of the bed. I went on to the other side of the bed, and well, she turned to the other side. I said, now, I'm not moving back and forth, so let me go ahead and go talk to this demon in you. And the, and, the, and the nurses were saying, I don't know, how did, you, how did you get her to do that? We can't get her to do that. I said, no, it ain't her, it's the demon in her. Ended up sending her to South Carolina, but I told her boyfriend at that time, I see, keep, keep telling her, you, you out of there. You come out, come out, come back, come back, come back home. Come back, come back into here. Come back, come back. Months later, she woke up and says, where is my baby? But it's something he had to keep saying to bring her back. Y'all were supposed to watch all these crazy movies. And that, that's just decided. Y'all better not watch it. They're going to take you right on out there with them. You think it's just a movie. And it's a setup to get in your mind, to get in your emotions, to wrap you up and pull you right on into that demonic atmosphere. And, it, and you wonder, what's why is this happening in my life? What's going on? Why is that happening? But you don't open the door. But Jesus says, I've got the keys of death, of death, death, of death, hell, and the grave. I got the keys of the devil. I got the keys that can unlock the door and let you out. I am your resurrected life, and I want you to come out. Another aspect of the resurrection, even though I'm talking about the power of love, is the power of the cross. I think we often miss this when we call it Easter. Some people call it Easter, we call it Resurrection Sunday. It's just a salvation point, standpoint. Even though it is, you got you know, people that, you know, sometimes I go to church all year, you know, show up there, but nevertheless, that's huge. But the power of the resurrection is not just a one-time benefit of salvation. That's what the Lord would tell you. It's not a one-time benefit of salvation. It's not a one-time benefit. It ain't a one-time benefit. Y'all got benefits some little God for your insurance. Huh? It don't max out. Yours don't max out. It don't hurt. It don't. His benefits don't max out. Oh, did you didn't preach that? Because you deal with benefits, don't you? And they benefits what? They don't max out. But his benefits, she said, don't max out. Say my benefits with Jesus. Don't max out. Thank you, thank you, Nikki. It's always good to have somebody in here know what they're talking about. The power of the resurrection is ours continuously. He said the resurrection is mine continuously. Is mine. Not just for a day. And, I de- and I'm decreeing over you right now. I'm saying this over you right now. Dead things in your life come alive. Be resurrected right now. I decree that over you. Dead things in your life. Dead things in your body. Dead things in your finances. Dead things in your marriage. Dead things in your, all your relationships. Dead things on your job. Dead things in your mind. I command it to be resurrected. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus says the main thing the world wants to let you. And my resurrection power is a resurrection of love. I stand in Christ. And that's where you're going to be. You're going to stand in this power alone. Yes, yes. When you go back next time, you read these scriptures and you think about it. It is a powerful life for the future. Resurrection is the power of life now and eternal. Not just going to heaven, but it's now. The resurrection of Jesus Christ produced birth and gave us life now and forever. So I have life now, have life now. and forever. And forever. So we have the power of the resurrection. Let me give you three things about the power of the resurrection. The power of God's transforming love is one I'm talking about that. The power of the love of the cross, I briefly shared on that. 
and the redeeming love of Christ for you took place. A print, a price was paid. A price was paid. It wasn't so much death as it was he had to become obedient to sin to his enemy. God is rich and good with this too, Pastor Paul. He had to become obedient. He stripped himself, the Bible says, of his rightful dignity. The Amplified says. He stripped himself of his rightful dignity and put on the disguise. Put on a costume. You know what he called that costume, Sam? The flesh. He called our flesh a costume. He said, I put on a disguise. I disguise myself with human flesh on top of God Almighty. Yeah? Okay, just bring it on up. Go ahead and read it. That's okay. Amplify is perfect. Can somebody get the Amplify for me to tell them what the scripture is? It's Philippians 2, starting at um, 7. Okay. <coughs> Verse. Uh, on, you just but made on. himself of no reputation. No, sorry. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took him upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in the heaven, and things in the earth, and things under the earth. Alright, come on, continue reading. Read out loud. This is the Amplified. Who, although being essentially one with God, and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attributes which make God God, did not think that this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained. Seven. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant, slave in that he became like men and was born a human being. Eight, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Nine, therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue, frankly and openly, confess and acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. He's talking about death and men. It's really dealing with Satan. He had to, because people died and he had to die. He had to let sin, the, the Bible is uh, Philippians, I mean, Isaiah 53 talks about that. The sins of the whole world was laid upon him. The whole world. The world then, the world to come, the world to come further. All the sins of the, of the, of the world was laid upon him. And he destroyed sin in the flesh. Romans 8 says. And then he goes on to say, Romans 8, 1 says, there's therefore not no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who are not out of the flesh but out of the spirit. For the law, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Free. Here we go again. From the law of sin and death. I'm free from the law of sin. It has no grip over me. can't hold me. It can't keep me in bondage. The Romans goes on to tell me, so don't give your members for instruments of unrighteousness, but give your members of righteousness to God. In other words, Satan can't make you do that. He can't make a possessed person not to release, release him. 
even a possessed, demon possessed person, all I got to say is I want to be free. Because the will of man is powerful, more powerful than the satanic powers that operate this earth. First Peter, one three says, Peter says, we are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Our hope is alive because of the resurrection. The truth of us is, is uh, we are born the children of the sons of God because of the resurrection. And when Paul talks about the goal in his life in Philippians 3.10, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. The power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. The Lord wants you to know the power of his resurrection. Because the power of resurrection is something not something that you're talking about. It's of something that we are living. You got the power of God operating through and in you. The power of the resurrected Lord is in us. But then we, we are at times defeated. And the Lord don't want you to be defeated. At times we're discouraged. And the Lord don't want you to be discouraged. Because greater is he that is what? Than what? And he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the Lord wants you to, he wants you to go in yourself. Go within yourself. And receive the greatness that's in you. That's him. To bring you through that thing. So many people need it. So he said, they, they, he says, Paul says an amplifier, I mean, uh, uh, amplifier is off the chain of the scripture, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his, suffer, his sufferings. Acts 2.24 says this, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holy to it. In other words, Satan couldn't keep Jesus in the grave. Number one, because he never sinned. <clears throat> Going back to 1 Corinthians 5, 5, 5, 17, it says, Christ was made sin for us who knew no sin, yeah. that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The sins of the world was laid upon him. Your sins and my sins and the future sins, and if we have children and their children, all the sins they could ever come on him at one time. And that's when he was in the flesh on the cross. Yeah. Don't forget the cross. In the flesh on the cross. And he crucified those sins. How much more should we tell people about this blessed hope and this blessed grace and this blessed power that we have on the inside of us? Is everything Everything went dark. 
the thing that's within us. Everything went dark. Lightnings roared. Thunders. The, the earth was shaking. And the temple ran into it. Meaning, you don't need a priest to go back there no more. You got King Jesus, King Priest. I've just seen Jesus. And I'm going to tell you all about my troubles. I've just seen Jesus. You help me, Jesus, alone. I've just seen. You didn't leave me. 
I left you. I'm sorry, Lord. I need your grace. I need your help. I need your strength. I can't do it. But I heard this morning, you can. So I recommit my life to you. Asking you to help me. Asking you to keep me. Asking you to lead me. Asking you to guide me. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray over them right now. I pray over right now. I pray, I pray over them in Jesus' name. We pray. Y'all pray in tongues, believers. And I pray for the strength of God. I pray and I come against every evil spirit and try to take this word out of their mouth. I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I pour out our faith over them in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for keeping them safely in your arms. And we dispatch angels to walk with them, to be with them. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're going to be rebirthing them. Remember this, God is more than enough. He's more than enough. 